It's time now for an in-depth look at the global markets this afternoon. And for that, I'm joined on the line by Mr. Daniel Yu, global strategist at QM Securities. Mr. Yu, thank you as always for coming on. Thank you for having me today. So the South Korean and Japanese foreign ministers meeting face to face today in Bangkok. Things were reportedly tense. It's expected that we're only one day away from Japan deciding to uh, take another big step in restricting trade by taking it off that uh, white list. Do you think that this meeting will have done anything to change that? Well, if the, looking at the market, uh, it seems that nothing has occurred between the, uh, these mm. two parties meeting. Uh, as you said, the diplomatic ministers from both South Korea and Japan uh, held talks today in Bangkok, but it seems that really nothing really came out of this talk, uh, it seems. Um, the Foreign Minister Kang jong hwa said that uh, the Korea will talk about relationship between two countries, uh, that it should not be catastrophic, uh, and is that uh, needs the resolution to become um, as soon as possible, but it seems that the Japanese foreign minister seems to be sticking to his government's current stance is that Korea should be taken off from the list. Um, now, probably on Friday, the decision will be made, but Korean market uh, with expectation that maybe the list will be, uh, will be okay, um, and that resulted into market uh, recovering to positive territories despite the U.S. market falling quite sharply as last night. Uh, but uh, as the later afternoon, with the concern that the white list uh, will be removed uh, for Korea maybe on Friday, uh, that resulted into equity market falling uh, quite sharply. Um, in terms of whether this will be mm, actually any kind of resolution will come out, we're not sure because it seems that both uh, political parties are putting political interest in front of the economic concerns at this point in time. Yeah, in other news, as expected, the Federal Reserve uh, lowered interest rates by 25 basis points, the first cut in 10 years. Uh, what was behind that decision, and where does the Fed go from here? Right. Um, the Powell the chairman have said that uh, it was a definitely on the insurance side, uh, on the, finance, uh, the press conference, he have said that, um, and that kind of caused some concern that maybe the interest rate cut will not be happening any further or any more aggressive in the future. Uh, however, though, uh, based on our analysis, we think that the U.S. inflation numbers are coming in well below uh, target, uh, which is around 1.6% on the PC scale, uh, versus the target of 2%. Uh, and economy continues to show slowing down. In the second quarter, it grew 2.1% from the uh, quarter before. Uh, YOY, it's up about 2.3%. Yes, it is better than expected, but nevertheless, it is quite sharp drop from the peak of 3.2-3.3% growth rate. Uh, and we think that that kind of growth rate will further go down with the continuation of protectionism happening globally, uh, as well as U.S.-China trade talk being uh, stagnant. So all being said, uh, economic growth slowing down, resulting into lower inflation pressure, uh, resulting into further rate cut in the future. Uh, we are expecting by end of next year, probably four times rate cut by Fed. Already once it's done uh, as of July 31st, uh, for probably by end of this year, another rate cut, and maybe twice more next year. Wow. Well, uh, this, this first rate cut was uh, widely expected, probably priced in, but still Wall Street was down by more than 1% across the board on Wednesday. What happened there, and how are other markets looking? Sure. Uh, as I have said, uh, Powell uh, yesterday said, uh, it was definitely on the insurance side uh, during the press conference. Um, that caused concern by the investors because uh, that means uh, maybe it is not a start of a long-term series of interest rate cuts, but it is just a temporary adjustment measures. Uh, this caused panic selling. Uh, people were concerned that liquidity injection might be limited, uh, and maybe uh, the U.S. market might be in a high level of valuation territories. Uh, also, with that news, dollar strengthened quite sharply. Uh, we have seen dollar hitting well above $98 index, uh, which is one of the highest numbers that we've seen in the last a few, uh, a few years. Now, with this, um, the U.S. market has corrected quite significantly. However, though, we are recommending that kind of correction is a uh, positive opportunity to buy into weakness because 
uh, we do expect the dollar to be uh, less strong in the future, meaning uh, the continuation of the interest rate cut will result into lower uh, dollar uh, index. And also that will result into higher liquidity uh, as well as a interest towards the emerging market in the future. Uh, so we think that um, the current uh, investment strategy of buying into weaker dollar uh, and also expecting higher emerging market index is uh, still okay. Uh, having said that, uh, Korean market did recover at the beginning, but it has fallen uh, and has de- uh, declined by about 3, 0.3% for Kospi and over 1% for Kostak. As for Japan, uh, it actually was a flat. Uh, as for China, it was down less than 1%, but still nevertheless down. All right, Mr. Yu, got it. That's all the time we have for today, though. Thank you for sharing your insights with us. Thank you very much.